Hello, my name is John Tran. I am application engineer supporting ST, NFC, and RFID products. First, I'd like to thank you for attending this webinar. Today, we are going to talk about NFC sensor tag. The NFC sensor tag is an NFC-enabled sensor node that can register environmental data. Our objective were to build a reference design that is scalable where temperature, humidity, pressure, vibration, and motion sensor can be added based on the final product requirements. At the same time, we need low power, low cost, compactness, and utilizes the simplicity of NFC communication. What is NFC? NFC stands for Near Field Communication. In the wireless spectrum that most of us are familiar with, NFC is a near field wireless technology with low data rate. It centers around 13.56 MHz versus the typical Wi Fi and Bluetooth targeting 2.4 GHz. It is zero power for the client device as the reader provides inductive power through its magnetic field. In many applications, NFC is used to complement Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology where pairing data is exchanged in near field so that the payload cannot be sniffed. In the sensor tag, NFC is used mainly to communicate and transfer data. The NFC data follows the standards that was created by the NFC Forum, a collection of companies that manufacture products that use NFC chips or manufacturers of NFC chips such as ST Microelectronics. The specifications cover all supporting protocols such as ISO 14443AB and ISO 15693. Upon those protocols, NFC Forum create methods of data exchanges and data formats themselves. This is where NDEF or NFC data exchange format comes into play. The tag communicates to the reader by switching its load from low to high and vice versa. And the reader can detect this change this process is also known as load modulation. On the other hand, the reader changes its carrier frequency via either amplitude or phase shift, and the tag can decode this signal modulation. In addition, as we had discussed, the reader also produces the RF field that would power the tag. So in near field, it can be considered that the transfer of energy will be done like a transformer. The major difference is that the magnetic field inside the iron core of the transformer is much stronger and energy transfer is practically lossless. For NFC, the transfer of energy is over free air and therefore is not as efficient. So in summary, the reader and its respective antenna will act as a primary of, of the transformer and send energy to the secondary that will be the sensor tag. Our current sensor tag design includes accelerometer, barometer, humidity, and temperature sensor. There is also a corn cell battery holder so that the sensor data can be logged over time. There are three modes in which the tag can operate. No battery or fully passive. In this mode, the tag is fully powered by the NFC reader or field. It can relay sensor information 
as long as the R field is present. The second mode is non-rechargeable battery. In this mode, the tag log sensor data at a configurable interval. And then the final, the third mode is rechargeable battery. In this case, the NFC magnetic field can be used to recharge the onboard battery so that it can be used over and over again. Once again, the tag needs to be in the RF field for energy harvesting to occur. Let's look at the sensor tag at the schematics level. In battery or data logging mode, VED, all power is being regulated by the 1.8 volt low drop voltage regulator. In the default configuration, R11 is populated. It's not populated. And the sensor group is consisted of a accelerometer, barometer, humidity, and temperature sensor. And this group is powered by the 32-bit microcontroller SEM32L0 by its GPIO pin. One can also depopulate the R10 shun, removing the R10 resistors, and connect the R11 resistor. In this case, the sensor group will be powered directly by the voltage regulator. This is the flexibility in power configuration that is presently available on the evaluation board. Furthermore, the accelerometer and barometer can wake up the microcontroller when a certain sensor event has been triggered. Notice that this is not available on the relative humidity and temperature sensor, only the barometer and accelerometers in this configuration. Beside powering the SD25DV NFC dynamic tech IC directly, the microcontroller can also put the SD25DV in a low power mode, consuming less than one microamp by driving the LPD signal high. The GPO signal alerts the microcontroller when an RF field are nearby or RF commands are being sent. The SCM32 microcontroller communicates with the sensor group via SPI bus. On the other hand, it communicates with the SD25DV using I2C bus. The NFC sensor tag utilizes ST technology in connectivity, computing, sensing, power management, and discrete. In connectivity, we ST microelectronic offer Bluetooth, NFC, Wi Fi, LoRa, and sub gigahertz. But in this application, we are going to use NFC. In computing, we have a whole range of microcontroller, but due to low power requirement and cost sensitivity, we're going to use the SCM32L011. Actually, in this design, it's using a L031, but we could possibly use the lowers a version, the L011, if a, a more cost-reduced version would be used with less sensor, of course. In sensing, our MEM sensor portfolio covers gyroscope, magnetometers, accelerometers, barometers, humidity, and temperature sensors. And in this design, we are using accelerometers, the LIS, 2DW12, and pressure temperature, the LPS22HB, and the humidity and temperature, the HTS221. We are also leader in power management, particularly low drop linear regulators. 
and SE also deliver a rich portfolio of discrete devices such as diodes and rectifier. So in general, all the silicon on the ST-NFC sensor tag evaluation board has all ST technology. Now, let's look into NFC. Our NFC product group um, has uh, the name SD25, includes all the important elements needed for a rich NFC ecosystem. Beside products such as SD25 DV Dynamic NFC Tag, SD supplies also as NFC RFID readers and standard NFC RFID tags. Also, SD produce secure NFC devices such as secure elements and NFC controllers for mobile phone, for example. And these products belong to a different group and not under the SD25 umbrella. Typically, NFC tags store static data and that can only be updated via RF readers, RFID system that comprise of microcontroller and NFC transfer transceiver such as the SD25R. So in this chart, um, you can see EM vehicle readers are used for mobile payment. The automotive readers are used to perform various tasks inside the cars. And general purpose readers are used to connect to your PC and they're used for all sorts of um, reading and writing to standard tags. And in, in, um, in focus of this um, design, we use the NF NFC dynamic tag. Now the NFC dynamic tag can communicate with microcontroller such as SCM32 via I2C bus. So this opens a wealth of possibility applications such as industrial, consumers, metering, appliances, Internet of Things can relay information at the M microcontroller level to the outside world via NFC. And as NFC is gaining ubiquity on the mobile phone platforms, we now have a simple and unique data port to get system information using the dynamic tag. So within our SD25 product portfolio, uh, you can notice that we have the SD25 uh, tagged ICs covering ISO 14443A, ISO 14443B and ISO 15693. And their memory can range from 2K bit to 64K bit. The dynamic tag family cover ISO 14443A and ISO 15693. And notably, the ISO 15693 device, the SC25DV, is being used in our NFC sensor tag. And for HF transceiver IC, we make CR95HF, ST95HF, SC25R3911, or more or less the 3900 subfamilies. And we also produce UHF read transceiver IC. Let's look at the SD25 dynamic tag in details. So looking at the M24SR, following ISO 14443A protocol with speed at 106 kbit per second and with a connection I2C to 1 MHz. The M24LR is an older product, now more or less superseded by the SC25DV, and particularly the SC25DV has a 256-byte buffer for fast data transfer and also C4-bit password and faster I2C bus. Furthermore, the SD25DV allows fast RF access up to 53 kbit per second to its 256 bytes buffer. This is done via special RF command. 
such as fast read message and fast write message. There's also a particular read block, fast read block, and fast write block. Several packages are available ranging from the ubiquitous SO8 to silicon wafer chip scale package. The 12 pin package allow access to LPD pin, which we had discussed earlier on a schematic level, where we can lower the uh, SD25 dV power to below one microamp. So, the application for NFC dynamic tag is vast. Just because we add that extra port, the I2C port, we now are able to do all sort of things. For example, inline customization product can be configured on the factory floor as it be, be going out to the customer or being configured. And it can also be configured at the point of distribution as well. You can store ID but product specific information and the customer can retrieve it using NFC phone. And this is crucial for warranty purposes and information. And it can also provide information to the field technician and it can be diagnosed simply using something like a web application, a cloud-based application that determine, you know, what is wrong with the, the hardware. NFC, a dynamic tag can also be used to um, secure Bluetooth and Wi-Fi pairing, as we discussed earlier. NFC dynamic tag can also be used to commission new hardware, such as LED lights or security cameras, to put them on a mesh network of sort. We can use our power in full passive mode to power with smart sensing application, such as the NFC sensor tag. And of course, you can also firmware upgrade in some application where data is uh, of the firmware it is rather small and sometimes the configuration, uh, the power configuration is small enough that you can actually power the entire tag uh, with its associated microcontroller and, and update the firmware. Do you know that there are 700 variants of SCM32 microcontrollers? And there are many of them supporting Cortex-M0 Plus and Cortex-M4. For the NFC sensor tag, we chose the SCM32L031. This particular SCM32 has 31 kbytes of flash for code, 8 kbytes of RAM for variables and buffers, and 1 kbytes of EEPROM for non-volatile data storage. The ultra-low power architectures boast a 250 nanoamp standby current consumption. The microcontroller core can operate up to 32 megahertz using either external crystals or internal RC oscillators. SD produces leading sensors that cover accelerometer, gyroscopes, and magnetometer, pressure, humidity, temperature, and MEMS microphone. These products come with low power consumption, thermal stability, and precision. In our, in our sensor tag, we, we put three sensors. The LIS DW12 come in tiny 2x2 two by, two by 0.7 millimeter package. This accelerometer has a selectable full scale of 248 or 16G with 12 to 14 bit resolution. The device consumes 40 nanoamp in standby and it also have a low power mode that consumes 380 nanoamp. The LPS 22HB is suitable for weather station, indoor and outdoor navigation, performing as both a barometer and altimeters. This Device has a range of 
260 to 1260 hectopascal. Accuracy is about 10 microbar and 6 centimeter resolution. It has a low power consumption of 3 microam. And finally, the HTS-221 is a relative humidity and temperature combo sensors. The device has a range of minus 40 degrees Celsius and plus 125 degrees Celsius with half of a degree accuracy from 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. So why, why an NFC-enabled sensor node? Well, low cost uh, comes to mind, ultra-low power, easy to implement, flexibility, and enhanced tax features, which uh, comes with the uh, NFC, so it's an added value. Let's talk about what low cost means. So low cost comparison with technology such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Since NFC does not require expensive chips antenna, in many cases the antenna can be a simple coil or PCB trays on, on the board. Uh, while an FCC verification is needed as it is an unintentional radiator, the process is not as expensive and complex as certification. Low power, full passive mode. In this full passive mode, the NFC sensor tags get all the power from the NFC reader magnetic field. This implementation does not need a battery, obviously. And it's also not a data logging features because it only gives you the, the data at the instant the reader field is there because once you're taking the reader field away, the system no longer has power, so it cannot truly data log. So, the, so in that application, it's more or less getting real time logging or a, a sanity check of an environment, in, um, not so much for logging over time. In the low power mode, there will need be needed a, a, a power source, like, like a battery, for example. However, the tag would be sleeping most of the time and it will wake up at interval, whatever it's one second interval or one hour interval to collect data and then store inside the SD25 DV memory. And therefore, in some cases, it, it can drain the battery, but it can be very power saving if set correctly. So in the consumption profile, as you can see, the, in the active mode, the SEM32 can use up to 245 microamp, and the LED would consume 150 microam on this particular board. And, um, but if it in standby mode or mostly sleeping, it consumes very little power. And because you're using the SEM32 as a 32-bit microcontroller in a fast I2C bus, you can actually uh, shorten the time in which you get the data, store it, and go back to sleep. The shorter the time you can do it, the, the better is the power saving. Looking at the consumption profile, as you can see, as the time interval um, lengthened from one second to one hour, the consumption in current diminished uh, drastically. And in the low case, in every one hour, you can consuming almost very little amount and so very, very little stress on the battery itself. And of course, this will be configurable based on the type of application, the type of use 
of this sensor tag, where not you need to collect data every one second for maybe um, a few days, or you collect every hour for a period of few months. Here we're looking at the battery life profile, and as you can see, if, if your interval is one hour, it could last years. Um, but if you are using one second interval, the time drastically drops down. But in, in application, when product being shipped across a, 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 a region, for example, when uh, the time being transported is only a few days, you don't need to uh, worry so much about, you know, over a long period of time. So, another thing that we want to look at is easy implementation. The implementation for NFC antenna is very simple. Sometimes it's just a small loop, inductive loop, and therefore it can be built within the PC board itself. In case of the uh, NFC sensor tag, is basically all around the circuit board and inside is the all the components needed for the sensor tag. 13.56 mega inductive antenna is much simpler than 2.4 gigahertz PCB antenna. There is no special PCB layout te technique to deal with and also, NFC driver, from a firmware perspective, is much more compact and require less code space than Bluetooth stack or Wi-Fi stack. And that means that it, it leads to a cheaper solution, right? And it's less requirement on the, um, of flash memory on the microcontroller. The NFC tag is absolutely scalable. Need only a shock detector or recorder? Simply remove the other two sensors and modify the firmware to accommodate that change. If another sensor is designed, start from the layout of the current board and add the needed sensor. And the sensor driver in the add the sensor driver in the existing library and add some code to accommodate the new sensors. Beware of the find of power, foot, power footprint as it would impact operation in full passive mode. Besides being a great data logger, the NFC sensor tag also has special features. One can use the 256 bytes buffer in the SC25DV to actually upgrade the firmware inside the SCM32L0. Since the implementation is via NFC, a UID or unique identifier is available to differentiate one sensor tag from the other. And this UID is read only by nature and it can never be overwritten. So, in summary, low cost in comparison with other wireless technology, such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Low power, which translate to longer battery life, and also possibility of battery less operation due to NFC. Easy implementation and easy certification only a verification with FCC is required. Flexibility and scalability for any application. The ability to add and remove different sensors. And NFC provides added features such as UID and firmware upgrade. In most cases, Asset tracking only involves logging environmental data of goods during transit. 
For example, cold chain management ensures that perishable goods maintains its quality during transport, and that a breach of humidity and temperature can damage the product and ultimately the brand itself. So the NFC sense attack has a great ability to monitor goods from manufacturing to end user. The sense attack can also be implemented into building structures to measure leaning, tilt, and degradation over a long period of time. It can measure vibrations that ultimately can cause damage to the structure. A weather station can also be implemented. It can be located anywhere in the city where anyone can tap with a phone and get humidity, temperature, barometric information. Connect the unconnected. Using the phone NFC capability, an animated Things can relay crucial information to the user. Has the humidity breached the medicine bottle? How hot is that baby, baby bottle? Is the bottle of the wine perfectly chilled? These are questions that can be quickly answered by the NFC sensor tag. NFC sensor can also be built into flexible patch like a small band-aid that relays customer vital signs that can be checked with a tap of a phone. For example, a patient can be sleeping wearing a special band-aid, basically a band-aid that can measure temperatures, skin temperatures, skin humidity, and perhaps a possibility of heart rate monitor. A nurse can walk up to the sleeping patient and tap with the phone, recording all the data, registering the data log information. And that information can be analyzed using a web application without disturbing the patient. No need for attaching loads of wires and complicated machine. An NFC sense attack can be made in form of a patch, a band-aid, affixed to an athlete, for example, to measure her skin bio, bio sign during an uh, extreme workout. And she can determine if uh, she needs to be hydrated due to those data with a tap of a NFC phone. Is it important to guarantee quality of perishable goods as they are being transported to their final destination? The NFC sensor tech can log all the needed information that ensure quality and protect the brand. NFC sensor tech can be implemented into smart baggages. It can determine if the luggage has been open, and how many times has it been open, or that the luggage has been subjected to high level of damage shocks. NFC sense attack can also be implemented in motors, for example, where it records extreme vibrations and heat, which usually precedes failure. Analyzing these data during maintenance cycle can reduce chances of catastrophic failure. Finding out the problem because it be, before it becomes very costly. And so, in summary of the NFC's tag application and usage, we can use it in cold chain management that ensure product quality as it travel from warehouse to end customer. Smart building could use it to protect structural degradation. Agriculture sector can benefit from humidity, temperature, and light measurement. 
sense attack and also be embedded into clothing or affixed to the skin to alert athlete of dehydration use the check because patients vital signs and so on in terms of deliverables as we have seen or discuss the actual hardware of the sensor tag itself as you can see the picture on the left the hardware can be can be bought online through distribution such as mouser or digikey once available on se.com one can also download the firmware the source codes of the firmware within the um, scm32 l0 the Gerber files, the schematics, mobile apps can be retrieved from iTunes and Google Play. Documentation and absolutely support of FAE in terms of sensors, microcontrollers, and NFC. For smartphone application, you can retrieve the Google Android app on Google Play. And the similar app is available on the App Store for iOS. The Android apps comes with many capability. It allows you to log information, change configuration such as time interval of log it also allows you to log min max values such as maximum values or min minimum value of the temperature sensors humidity pressures and accelerometer it will show a chart the plot of the information in detail it can show you the actual data uh, in individual data points you can also export the data to a CSV file so that can be analyzed using all the application. It also has the one shot energy harvesting mode for battery less operation. When you tap with a phone or reader without battery, you can measure the information from the sensor tag at that moment in time. It also log event such as the orientation of the tags. Now for iPhone support, as you have already known, some time ago, Apple announced the NFC support for reader mode and this start to happen in iOS 11, supporting iPhone 7 and higher so iPhone 8 iPhone 10 and beyond the capability of iOS 11 currently is that it can read tags from type 1 to type 5 with in-depth information only and one would need an iOS application it does not natively identify information or in-depth information at the tab similar to Android, you have to run an app. And of course, you can download the NFC Sensor Tech app on iTunes. This is what you would see when you run the iPhone app. First, the reading screen showing you to tap with the phone. And notice that the NFC antenna is very much to the top of the phone so unlike a lot of different Android phone it's not in the middle of the back of the phone but it's more to the top of the phone when you're ready to scan you simply place in proximity within a few centimeters or two centimeters of the NFC sensor tag a graph would display 
they show all the data that are being stored in the tag. Here an example of acceleration information. You can also use a PC to exercise the NFC sensor tag. We have the SC25 PC NFC software. And to get it, you can go to the link down below to, to download it. And it would require you to have the SC25 or 3911B discovery board. You can also use a type of reader known as the LR1002. It makes by FEG. And these are the reader currently supporting the SD25 PC NFC software. Here's a display of what you can see when downloading sensor data from the tag. It shows similar screenshot from the apps, temperature, pressure, humidity, acceleration. It has the ability to trigger a certain sensor event and configure the data such as time interval and so on. Some of you may have noticed that there is a black connector in the back of the NFC sensor tag. That connector is used to download the firmware of the SCM32L0. To do that, you would need a nuclear board. This is um, a quite up popular board that you can find in different distributions such as DigiKey and Mauser. The SmartTouch is programmed using the STLink V2 in-circuit debugger and programmer. And this section is shown in the yellows. You can break this board in half, retaining the STLink section, the smaller part. Now, you will connect it according to figure on the left. Make sure that the battery is in its holder. You will need the tag to be powered during this, this operation. There are two ways to get the binary file into the SCM32L0. One of the way is simply plug this board, the, the ST-Link board via USB to your computer, once you connect it, it will be recognized as a, a USB drive, for example. You simply drag and drop the bin file, the binary image, onto the drive, and you will notice the LED stop blinking. And that signals that the firmware is being programmed onto the SCM32L0. When it's completed, you can remove the sensor tag and start the operation as normal. You can also use a software that is known as the ST-Link Utility, available on sc.com. From there, it allows you to open the file, read the file, and do the target program and verify. Well, thank you for your time and attention.